What do you see? When you gaze up at the countless stars clustered in their galaxies, mind-boggling distances, black, lonely space, just random specks of light, or something more. For centuries, people have imagined the outline of exotic creatures up there in space. Mythical figures like Gemini and Capricorn seem to spring forth from the heavens. And slowly over the years, these astrological signs in the zodiac took on godlike powers. People came to believe that the stars actually control human destinies, that our individual wills are pulled and pushed by distant heavenly bodies. But surely we think no one believes such things today. Perhaps we better think again. It is written. This is George Vanderman presenting as the answer to your deepest needs, the living Christ. Today, Chasing Lucky Star. Space shuttles, artificial intelligence, laser surgery, superconductors. These are the watchwords of the age we live in. Our dominant driving force seems to be rational, scientific progress. Man triumphing over his environment, becoming the master of his fate. Yet, there's quite another and a different, strong undercurrent that flows against the high-tech tide of today. It's an ancient belief that arose when men felt much more vulnerable before the awesome elements and worship the stars. The belief in astrology. Astrology is not faded into a superstitious, superstitious past. It's still very much with us. Amazingly enough, our present secular age is even more susceptible than previous, previous ages of faith to those ancient charms of the stars. In 1976, a Gallup poll suggested that those who take astrology seriously may number as many as 32 million. That was double the number estimated in the early 1970s. The survey also disclosed that 22% of adult Americans believe in astrology, and 24% read an astrology, astrology column regularly. Did you know that that's more than those who read the Bible on a daily basis? Yesterday, about 1,200 of the 1,700 United States daily newspapers print horoscope columns. And the astrology magazines, which used to gather dust on newsstands, remember? They're now sold by the millions. Astrology buffs have set up a computer network which provides, believe it or not, horoscopes 24 hours a day on 2,000 campuses across the United States. In one year, a major publisher actually sold 8 million purse-sized horoscope books. Courses in astrology and other occult arts are now offered at many colleges and even high schools. In fact, Recently, the president of the New York City Board of Education suggested that astrology might be taken into consideration to better understand misbehavior between students whose signs conflict. And listen, recently we were shocked by allegations that the schedule of the White House was regulated according to advice given by a San Francisco astrologer. The president of the United States the leader of the free world, guided in part by the stars. Astrology is based on the belief that the pull of the sun and the moon, the planets and the stars, somehow influence human affairs. Much is made over the birth dates and their corresponding astrological signs. Personalities are supposed, supposedly fixed by whether we're born under Leo or Scorpio. But of course, human beings are given shape long before birth at the moment of conception, when our genetic makeup is fixed. And at the time of birth, the pull of the obstetrician has many times the force of, say, the pull of Mars. 
At any rate, the sun's path through the zodiac, that belt of astrological constellations, has changed over the years. Because the Earth wobbles in its spinning movement, it's been drifting farther and farther from its astrological schedule every year. For example, in late June, when according to astrology, the sun is supposed to be in the constellation Cancer, and influence us accordingly, it's actually one constellation over in Gemini. But not only are horoscopes off astronomically, they're also, they also fail when tested objectively, proving to be about as accurate as simple guesswork. One physicist examined thousands of scientists and politicians listed in who's who. According to astrology, those born under certain signs are more likely to enter science than politics. But when the physicist checked birth dates of those scientists and politicians, he found their corresponding signs to be as random as those of the general public. Imagine. And a psychologist at Michigan State University in Lansing obtained the records of hundreds of couples who married and divorced during 1967 and 1968 in Michigan. And he discovered that those born under compatible signs married and divorced just as often as those born under incompatible signs. Another scientist, a French statistician, decided to be very thorough. He examined the zodiac signs, moon signs, planet signs, midheaven signs, and ascendant signs of over 15,000 successful professionals. The result? The correlations between profession and astrological influences were no better than random chance. But random chance is really the key to most horoscopes. That's the secret. Most personality descriptions are so general that there's a good chance that most people will see something of themselves in them. And generic uh, fortune cookie type predictions about meeting someone special or making an important decision have a pretty good chance of coming true anyway. Listen, the French scientist I just mentioned once sent out a newspaper ad in which he offered free personalized horoscopes. 150 people responded. And to each one of them he sent the same information and asked how well the description fit. Some 94% said they recognized themselves. 94% and had all been given the horoscope of a mass murderer. But the amazing thing is that people still believe, no matter how thoroughly astronomy destroys the scientific basis for astrology, no matter how completely predictions made by the stars fail, no matter how interchangeable horoscopes become. People still believe. In fact, would you believe it? 10,000 full-time and 175,000 part-time astrologers still conduct a thriving business. Why? Why have those zodiac signs become so influential? Why do more people believe in astrology now, according to astronomer Roger Culver, than at any time since the Renaissance? Well, in some ways, we must admit the appeal of the stars is understandable. The thought that there could be a personal message up there in the cosmos, cosmos is attractive, especially in a mechanized, impersonal age. People want to believe that they're not just an isolated speck in a vast universe. They long for some cosmic connection. We want to be significant. We also long for some way to gain control over our chaotic lives. So much seems beyond our control these days. So many forces bend and bruise us. The stars promise a kind of shortcut to control. If we can just find that right day, that lucky time and place, everything will be all right. By the way, we've got a special book today that will answer many of your questions about the occult in general and astrology in particular. It's called The Tell-Tale Connection. You'll especially appreciate the big picture this reveals of what lies behind many psychic phenomena, much of it. So please be sure to ask for your free copy of the Tell Tale Connection at the close of today's telecast. 
Well, let's take a look at what Scripture has to say about astrology's promise of significance and control. You may be surprised to learn that in the Bible, astrology is seen as a kind of idolatry. In fact, the book of Deuteronomy contains this admonition in a passage forbidding idol worship. Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter and the 19th verse. Listen. And when you look up to the sky and see the sun, the moon, and the stars, do not be enticed into bowing down to them and worshiping things the Lord your God has apportioned to all of the nations under heaven. Why should we worship things which the Almighty has created and controlled? Why place our faith in the created instead of the Creator? See? That just doesn't that just didn't make sense to the Hebrews. It certainly shouldn't make sense to us here in the 20th century. Among the crimes of Manasseh recorded here in the Bible, one of Israel's most idolatrous kings is listed this one, 2 Kings 21, verse 3. Read it right here. He bowed down to all the starry hosts. When prophets like Zephaniah warned apostate Israel of God's impestment, impending judgment, one group singled out was the worshipers of the stars. And the prophet Jeremiah goes so far as to predict a time when even the bones of the apostates will be dug up and exposed to the elements. Listen carefully to this from Jeremiah, the eighth chapter, second verse. It says, they will be exposed to the sun and the moon and all the stars of the heavens which they have loved and served, and which they have followed and consulted and worshipped. Who are being warned of a terrible fate? Those who have followed and consulted the stars. I can't imagine a clearer indictment of astrology. Can you? Obviously, the Bible doesn't leave room for any occult message in the stars. But, friend, the stars aren't just meaningless dots of light in a vacuum vast vacuum of space, they do have a voice. They do speak to us, and this is what they say. Psalm 19, verses 1 and 2. Marvelous words. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day they pour forth, forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. What is the speech? What is the knowledge? It is praise. Praise for the glories of our Creator. It's Him. It is Him we belong to. It is He who can guide us to our highest destiny. The prophet Isaiah shows us an invaluable perspective. He urges us in Isaiah 40, verse 26, Look, lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. When we look up to the starry heavens, what we, can we take comfort in? The immeasurable power of God, his infinite abilities, not the assumed powers of some zodiac sign. The writers of Proverbs also joins in this chorus celebrating God's qualities made evident in the heavens. He says, recorded in Proverbs 3, verse 19, he said, By wisdom the Lord laid the earth's foundations. By understanding he set the heavens in place. What do we see shining up there in the starry night? God's infinite wisdom. That's what we see. His understanding. That's what we see. He's the one we can trust with our lives. He's the one who can guide us, not the stars themselves, which he calls by name. So the stars do speak, speak to us, but the information they share is much more profound than any fortune cookie phrase. They tell us about a Creator whose wisdom and power are available to us here on earth, and I'm so glad. And the Bible tells us that this same God who set the heavens in place is interested in our individual problems and dreams. Yes, He's the one who can bring order out of disordered lives. He can create meaning where we only see insignificance. Now, the same psalm which tells us about the heavens declaring God's glory also tells us about another way God speaks. 
And really, it's the primary way, the principal way, in which he guides us. You say, what is that? Listen to Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The same God who choreographs the movements of the stars in their perfect patterns has given us a perfect law, too. It's trustworthy. It can make even the simple wise, so the Scripture says. This is how God can bring order and meaning out of chaotic lives, His law. He shows us the best way to live. It guides us through morally confusing choices. It lays down principles that show how we may best accomplish our life purpose. Astrology promises luck. It claims to reveal the right day for concluding that business transaction, the right time for making that new friend. Success is made to seem a matter of finding the lucky circumstances. But of course, success in life is far more than that. We need to know how to make good relationships, how to be good friends and spouses and parents. And that's what brings success, not just some supposedly fortuitous time or place. We need to know how to conduct our business according to God's principles of honesty and fairness, according to His wisdom. That's what brings success, my friend, not some pattern in the stars. People in despair over failed relationships, missed opportunities, broken dreams, hope against hope that some message in the stars will get them on the right track. They're getting the wrong message, my friend. Astrology is a counterfeit wisdom. It's a fraud. The real message is this. Start looking for God's wisdom and begin by looking at His perfect law, the law which Psalm 19 describes as sweeter than honey. Isn't that lovely? More precious than gold. Some people have got the idea that God's law is going to box them in. Have you ever heard that? They fear that it'll take the joy out of their lives. Oh, how totally different is the attitude of the poet in Psalm 19. Listen to verse 8. Listen. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The command of the Lord is, commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. Oh, friends, this is a promise. It is especially meaningful meaningful for those who have entered into personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. God's precepts produce genuine joy. Those who know His law have a light in their eyes. Yes, the starlight of God's great wisdom is twinkling in their eyes. Oh, stop and think. Is the Creator who launched billions of stars out into immeasurable space really going to cramp your style? Is the one who holds galaxies in the palm of his hand really going to box you in? Oh, no, no. The life God calls us to is as wide as the heavens. He wants to open up before us limitless possibilities. Our Creator is the one who bestows life in and all its abundance. How pathetic the promises of astrology look in comparison. How trivial Does this guesswork seem? We don't need to chase lucky stars. We have the wisdom of God to hang on to, a wisdom He's graciously shared with us in His Word. It's right here in these pages. It's up to us to discover it, put it into practice. Oh, friends, there's a very good reason why God's law brings joy. What puts a light in our eyes? A verse in the New Testament explains why. Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 10. Listen. For we are God's workmanship. See? Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Simple, but profound. Those who have accepted Christ as Savior, received His forgiveness, become a special part of God's creation. We become His workmanship. And what were we created for? To do good works, to reflect God's wonderful qualities of love, patience, peace. These good deeds are hard destiny as human beings. It's just as if they're out there waiting to be discovered, waiting to be experienced. 
Gemini and Capricorn, don't hold the secrets, my friend. Your purpose is hidden in the Word of God, the Word that holds the seed of life in all of its abundance. What do we see when we look up at the countless stars clustered in their galaxies? We see a wise and powerful God who cares about us. Our destinies are wrapped up in His. Oh, friends, we can be at home under the heavens. We don't have to try to find that one lucky star. All the stars are good signs to the one who sees their Creator. Would you listen to my daughter Connie Jeffrey as she sings, He's Everything to Me. Connie? In the stars is handiwork I see over land and sea what is that to me I will celebrate nativity for it has a place in history sure he came to set his people free what is that to Till by faith I met him face to face And I felt the wonder of his grace Then I knew that he was more than just a God who didn't care That lived away up there And now he walks beside me day by day That lived away up there And now he walks beside me day by day Ever watching o'er me lest I stray Helping me to find that narrow way He's everything to Thank you, Connie. Have you felt the wonder of His grace? Have you met the Creator face to face? He can mean everything to you. Why not turn your life over to Him just now as we pray? Father mine, your glories do shine in the heavens. We want to be at home under the stars. We want to be at home in your hands. So we commit ourselves now to the one who came to save us, the Lord Jesus Christ. We accept his life and death on our behalf. We believe that he reconciles us to our Creator. Forgive us and accept us now in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it seems so innocent, chasing lucky stars, taking a peep at the horoscope. What's the harm? Maybe you've asked that question. Well, now we know. Astrology isn't a harmless plaything. It's the devil's plaything. So many seemingly innocent playthings aren't so innocent because of who they belong to, who they were designed by. UFOs, for instance. Psychic healing 
in all of its disappointments. Seances, Ouija boards. The book we're offering today pulls back the curtain and reveals the ancient enemy behind these deadly games. The Telltale Connection will help you to discover the Bible's unmistakable warnings about these mysterious tools and how we can avoid them. Listen to the subtitle, Unsuspected Ties with the Frightening World of Angels Turned Demons. I hope you'll write or call us just now and ask for your free copy of the Tell Tale Connection. It makes for some challenging and illuminating reading, I can promise you. We have a copy just for you. Now, here is the information you need. As a convenience, you may request the free gift offer by calling our toll-free number, 1-800-253-3000. Call right now. That's 1-800-253-3000. Remember, the offer is sent by mail, free and postpaid. You may have to dial the number more than once, but please keep trying. The operator needs only your name, address, and phone number, and the name of the offer you want. Call toll-free now, 1-800-253-3000. Lines are open now. That's 1-800-253-3000. If you prefer, you may request the offer by writing to George Vandeman, Thousand Oaks, California, 91360. The Telltale Connection is one of the most sought-after books that we publish. Multiplied millions seem to be interested in the hereafter, and also the tools of the enemy in these final days of Earth's history. That's probably why the demand is so great. So we have one for you set aside. Please ask for it, but the time has come too quickly to say goodbye, everyone. But remember, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God.